Good afternoon, everyone. Please do me a favor and look at the person sitting next to you. See how different they are? They look different. They behave different. They think different. And they like different things. In fact, all the audience around you is creatively different. Yet, we were all treated as if we were the same exact person for the first 18 years of our lives. Welcome to schools. <laughs> so, before I start, let me tell you a bit about myself. I was born inside a school, literally. My house is inside a school. It's my family school. And most, most of my uh, family members are educators. And I've been watching students come in and out of the school my entire life. So you can see how miserable my life is. <laughs> anyway, I, and I also visited and attended schools around the world. And I started questioning the why. Like, why are students coming here every day? Why are they learning what they're learning? And why do schools exist in the first place? And so many weird but fundamental questions. And I started to notice a pattern. As soon as we turn four years old, we enter an organization for a purpose of understanding the environment around us and be better prepared for the future. And so uh, uh, I was afraid that um, throughout the years, we noticed that there are a lot of defects, actually, in the system. And I thought that if my child one day grows older, by the way, I don't have a child, I'm not married yet. Those are not the kind of skills that I do now. <laughs> but anyway, if one day my child gives a talk about how education failed him, I lost. And so what I th said that we have to do something about this. And so one year ago, I gathered with a colleague of mine who shared the same vision and gathered with an incredibly skilled team to go on a mission to help improve education. And so with the help of mentors and experts, we started to note what, what are the problems in education today and what are the things that we can improve upon. And so I'm going to share with you some of the points that we've been tackling for the past year. So the first thing is thinking different is considered a bad practice at school. Why? because we weren't supposed to think different. You see, schools, when they were created in the Industrial Revolution, the market then required factory workers, people who can obey orders, do repetitive tasks, over and over again, not to question things. And those are the kind of skills that you were taught in schools. And those skills were adopted in schools then and are still adopted today. Today, you solve problems at schools with the teacher's preferred method. You don't have room to innovate and create new ways of solving things. And this is a perfect recipe of destroying creativity. And talking about creativity, think of students before entering schools, at the age of three years old. They are literally scientists. They're discovering their environment. They want to break glass, burn their hands, uh, write on walls. Now, parents hate that, but this is feeding their curiosity. They're in, they're discovering their environment. And this is learning. And so we thought that the first thing we should do is define the problem, exactly what it is, and then the end result. And let students come up with as many creative ways as they can to reach that. So every solution is correct and that if we have the end result reached. I mean, you can have the next Einstein sitting inside your classroom, but you just have to provide the right environment for them to be confident enough to show that. So second of all is knowing what are we teaching in schools, like the subjects. And to do so, um, look at the definition of schools. School is a place where it helps you understand your environment, like how plants are growing, and how your human body functions, how clouds are forming in the galaxies. And so back in the day, if you looked around you, you'd see like books, letters, magazines, and learning how to read and write was a fundamental skill that enabled you to know and understand the environment around you. And this is what school offered back then. Now, look at the world around you. They're all phones and tablets and laptops. Technology is all over us and within us. And so if we didn't now teach how uh, to write and read code and programming, we don't understand our environment. And the whole concept of a school breaks down here. So 
we are engineers, okay? And we're the kind of creatures that love reverse engineering stuff. And so, to define exactly what we want to teach in schools today, we don't have to understand what the environment looks like now, we have to understand what the environment is going to look like five to ten years from now. Reverse engineer those and start teaching those skills today in classrooms. We're talking about AI, data analysis, creative thinking, design mindsets, and all sort of uh, subjects. And once you define what subjects you're going to teach in school, now comes the method of teaching. How are we going to deliver those methods in a way that is efficient to students? Now, students love going to schools, some students. And they, uh, they, love, um, they only do that because their friends are there. They get to hang out around. Not because they're excited to solve the next quadratic equation. Um, they don't really seem to care about that. No offense to math teachers. But, um, and when they go home, uh, they're also not excited to solve homework. They're excited to solve a video game challenge, but not a chemistry challenge. So why isn't chemistry considered a game? What, what is a game? What defines a game? And so this was a very interesting exercise that we did. We sat down with game developers to understand this riddle, because they surely solve the problem of engagement with students. And so we noted down the elements of forming a game, and we integrated those in one of our courses, and we delivered that to our students inside a classroom. And the result was astonishing, because now we have the ability to trick students that whatever subject we're teaching is not, is not a different and just as, as exciting as a game. And you can transform the whole learning experience with that. And the second crucial thing in the method of education is adaptive learning. Every student is different, just like the person sitting next to you. Students prefer different ways of learning. So we had to understand within the same course and within the same classroom, we had to understand and detect what every student prefers to learn, like videos, is it through text, animation, uh, hands-on experiences, and then deliver the subject accordingly. And after you take that course, it's time to do an exam. So the next topic was uh, deciding and trying to research more on exams and the grading system we have in school. Now, there's nothing wrong with assessing whether students understood the concepts or not. But what's wrong is doing a standardized test and spreading it on all over students. Now, it might be fair for some, but it, it's, it's unfair for the most. And so here we start talking about uh, adaptive grading systems, because you can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. You might have a student that has the potential to become the next, uh, the best photographer or director in the country, but he doesn't know how to solve an integral equation, and so he is considered a failure in school. So instead, what we can do is stress for some students more on subjects and less on other subjects. Because right now, what it is in schools is that you'd find that schools stress more on math and sciences and less on drama, arts, and music. Why is that? We should more stress on certain students, uh, more, for example, on photography and less on math, and other students more on physics, for example, and less on physics or chemistry. And the third, um, and after, uh, so fast forward, and it's time to graduation. Uh, and just last week, uh, I was sitting watching my sister graduating from uh, high school. And it's um, very funny, if you look now, because since it's the season, uh, if you go and watch um, graduations and look at the graduates, they're literally the same exact product with their caps and gowns. And so along the years, uh, school kind of molded their minds in a way to produce a standard mind and then put a cap on top of each one. So it's like a product. And so, at the end of every graduation ceremony, students throw their cap. That's freedom. Freedom for their minds. This is the first time they get to choose how their next year looks like. And so, they go on a journey to discovering their own unique learning path. So my sister, as any other student, put her, cap, put her hand on the cap and threw it in the air. And now she has her mind free. But guess what? My sister doesn't know what to do next in her life. She doesn't know what she likes, what she dislikes. And this is not the case of my sister. It's the case of millions of students graduating uh, now. And so what's worse is that students are 
entering university in a major and then transferring after a couple of years because they thought that they were passionate about this but then found that it's not what they like or uh, find, expected something and saw something else. So one of the most fundamental and crucial things that schools should do is discovering what every single student is passionate about. That's how you prepare students for the next stage. So after a lot of um, research and hard work and um, help with mentors and industry experts from the best companies in the world, we came up with what we called Sherpa, which is an online platform that offers courses to students in a fun and interactive way, introducing them to future skills. Now, I'm not going to talk more about what we're doing. I'm going to let you discover it on your own. My message to you is this. School didn't end when you graduated. We're going to keep learning for the rest of our lives. It is up to us to choose our preferred method of gaining knowledge and fulfilling our curious mind. And now, I want you to do yourself a favor. Don't look at the person next to you. Look at yourself. You are the different one. You're creative and unique. You have a talent that no one in the world has and no, that no school curriculum can ever discover. Every one of you has a single and hidden gem inside us. It is up to us to choose the learning path and show that we are all creatively different. Thank you very much. <laughs>